So the code also is asking us to determine what's inside the condition space and what's outside the condition space. And this wall assembly and this floor assembly that's going that way uh, is separating the garage that is an unconditioned space from the conditioned space inside. So this whole building assembly uh, has to be constructed with that primary air barrier on the outside, the primary air barrier on the inside, and the thermal control layer in between here. So when we're looking at the wall, it can make pretty good sense, and you can make that, that definition of what's inside the condition space and what's outside the condition space. When we take that wall and we just lay it flat and we create a floor system of that, we have to remember that we need to enclose the insulation and create air barrier systems on all six sides of the cavity there. So if we look up here and we take this bat out, we can see that the other side of this, this rim joist is insulated to floor system that's separating the house from the garage, the, the, the tuck under garage in this case, and they've had to air seal this floor assembly rim joist uh, quite uh, intensively in order to get that air separation between the garage and the house, but also to make that floor insulation work and be airtight as well. Uh, so they've done a really nice job here, but they've had to use a lot of foam because this fire blocking and floor joists and other things here uh, create a lot of little nooks and crannies that have to be air sealed properly. So remember that when insulation is installed in these rim joist areas that the insulation in rim joist, there's an exception that it doesn't have to be enclosed or have an air barrier on the conditioned side of the assembly, which means that it's really important that the insulation is in contact with that primary exterior air barrier system. This isn't a great example here because this is the floor system of the garage, but when you look at insulation that's kind of in a crescent shape uh, and puffed out from the rim joist itself, it's a good indication that it's not, hasn't been installed so that it's in contact with the surface that it's intended to insulate. Um, I'm going to try to reinstall this bat so that it's in contact with the surface that it's insulated without compressing it significantly and losing a lot of R value that's in this bat here. So you can see that it's in there a little bit better than this bat in the other bay here. Uh, but we'll show you some other examples of rim joists here in a minute. Now the air barrier, air sealing and insulation installation table talks about the rim joist uh, specifically in terms of air sealing the rim joist area and also insulating uh, the rim joist area. Now we have to remember that the rim joist is not just the connection of the foundation to the first floor floor system. There's also a rim joist between the first floor and the second floor. And in this case, that's, that's the, the case that we're looking at here, is the first floor to the second floor. Now from an insulation perspective, again, we're not required to enclose this insulation on the conditioned side of the assembly in the same way that wall insulation should be enclosed uh, or, or general cavity insulation should be in, enclosed on all six sides of the cavity that it's installed in so that we're avoiding convective loops, we're avoiding air moving through the insulation uh, and lessening its R value there. So this insulation needs to be installed in direct contact with the surface that it's uh, insulating here. So if we come in a little bit closer here and take a look as I'm moving this insulation out, we'll see that if I move this insulation out here that it's not in great contact with the surface that it's intended to insulate here. Um, so we would need to, we can see how it's kind of pushed out here, we would actually need to push it in further um, without compressing it a lot so that it's actually touching that surface it's intended to insulate. Now I'm going to remove this bat a little bit more here so that we can get to the air sealing requirements of the code. And you can see, uh, see that the code says that the 
rim board, which is this piece, needs to be air sealed to the subfloor above and also air sealed to the um, uh, top plate uh, or the rim board at the bottom here. Uh, so it feels like that it's not air sealed very well here uh, at the bottom here. And I can feel a little bit of air moving in uh, through that location there. So this um, has this foam on it, but again, it's kind of that question of, is it there and does it actually work as it's been installed? And in this case, at the top, it's working, but at the bottom, it's not working. We're not getting that air seal that's required by the code.